to the program Talking Politics on your Digital First Pan-African News Network, TSTV. I am Osa Zeh Isesele. Talking Politics is a political news program on what's happening in the world of politics within and outside Nigeria, featuring discourse on national issues, latest political news and updates, interviews and coverage of political parties and campaigns from TOS Politics. All right, we will take a quick break, and when we come back, it will be time to keep you informed with the trending political news headlines. Talking Politics, we'll be right back. Do stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still watching Talking Politics on TOS TV, reaching you live from our Abuja studios, Nigeria, West Africa. It's now time to take a look at the political news headlines. Now, there's, it came as a root shock to many when the Central Bank of Nigeria announced and released a press release banning cryptocurrency transactions in the nation. The Apex Bank have come out to explain why it banned cryptocurrency-related transactions in the country, claiming the digital currency is used for money laundry and terrorism. The regulator, said this is a, the regulator said this in a statement on Sunday, days after affirming a 2017 directive to financial institutions to block cryptocurrency accounts. Now, the decision has sparked outrage from mostly young people in a country that is the world's second biggest user of virtual currencies like bitcoins. A few persons have reacted to this directive and prominent of them all is Nigeria's one-time presidential aspirant, Dr. Kinsley Mogalu. Here's a quote from him. He says, I am a bit concerned, but I was not surprised. I was not surprised because you have to first of all understand that there are many dimensions to the whole question of cryptocurrency. Government needs to make investment climate more friendly. That was Kinsley Mogalu, who is also a former deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. President Muhammadu Buhari on Saturday said Nigeria and Africa are happy with the United States endorsement of ex-finance minister Dr. Ungozi Okunjewela for the Director General of the World Trade Organization. Now, the United States, under the administration of ex-president Donald Trump, had objected to Okunjewela's candidacy for the WTO top job. Now, instead, Trump had preferred South Korea's trade minister, Yoo Young-hee, saying she got the requisite experience to lead the organization. However, the U.S. made a U-turn by backing the ex-vice president of the World Bank, thus paving the way for her to be the first woman and African to emerge as the World Trade Organization boss. And moving on to Oyo State PDP chapter, crisis rocking the Oyo State PDP chapter. Um, according to an online news source, the crisis rocking the Oyo State chapter of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, took another dimension on Saturday night as the governor of the state, Shei Makinde, left the official WhatsApp platform of the party in the state. Um, the publicity secretary of the party, Akim Olatunji, had earlier posted a video of an attack by suspected Fulani headsmen on the people of Ayete, headquarters of Ibarpa North local government area of the state, on the WhatsApp group. Now, the video was calling on the governor to take urgent steps to save the people of Ayete from incessant attacks by Fulani headsmen. But the governor became angry. Now, Olatunji had commented on the video saying, this video has gone viral, but the authority needs to confirm the claim. It's very urgent to address the message. Um, reacting to that, Governor Makinde angrily left the WhatsApp platform around 10 p.m. on Saturday. Um, so that's it for the political news headlines on Talking Politics. Before we go on to unveil our guest for today's discussion, let's take this quick break and Talking Politics will be right back. Do stay tuned. is still talking politics on TOS TV, your digital first Pan African news network. It's time for us to unveil our guests in the studio and of course um, introduce to you the issue 
right on the table of discussion today. Um, we're looking at 2023, can PDP bounce back? Um, losing out of power after 16 years at the helms, the opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP, believes it can stage a comeback during the next general elections by defeating the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, um, as Nigerians eagerly wait for another general elections. Discussing with me on this show today is Mr. Emmanuel Ume. Uh, Mr. Emmanuel Ume is a member of the People's Democratic Party and a businessman. Mr. Ume, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you very much. Now, um, let's, let, let's go straight to my first question. After being at the helms of power for 16 years, um, there are speculations that your party can make a comeback in 2023. What's your take on that? I don't think it's a speculation. It's a statement of fact. Okay. Um, when you look at what has happened in the last six years, that the APC has been in power, you realize that um, Nigerians have become more, you know, uh, poorer. You know that corruption, you know, it's right now it's number one in, in the country. You look at the fact that we've become even more insecure. And then you look at the 2019 election, we just concluded 2019 election. Is a, for me in particular, it's a statement of fact that I feel that we won the election. Nigeria knows that we won the election, but we respect the decision of the Supreme Court. Uh, moving on to 2023, we are eager to come back to power. We realize that um, the APC government hasn't done any better. They've promised Nigerians so much and they've delivered little. So 2023, the, the, the chances for PDP is really high. I'm very, very sure that we'll come back to power in 2023. It's a, it's a statement of, of fact based on the indices on ground. Okay, and you seem to be very, um, very confident. Now, what are some of the strategies that your party is putting in place um, ahead of 2023 to ensure that Nigeria um, Nigerians experience better and good governance because Nigerians are yearning for better and good leadership. So with this confidence, what strategies do you have, does your party have in place to, to ensure that Nigerians get the best of uh, political leadership? We're opening the space for younger people. Um, the party, there's what they call Generation X, where young people in the party, and my, I, myself inclusive, um, we can come together harness policies that we feel that will be beneficial to the party and to the people, Nigerian people. And then you look at the fact that um, the party has always had, you know, his, his, his hands wide open for young people. If you look at facts from 1999 till date, young people has always flourished, um, has always flourished in the party. So and it has not changed. And that's why you see um, young people are interested in PDP. You go on social media, you see a lot of young people. They're so you know excited when they want to get registered. They, sometimes when I see my messages, where can we register? Where do we want to, want to register? Where can we register? So the party is going to open the space for young people. And then you look at, we're going to focus strictly on policies that is going to better the lives of Nigeria uh, and Nigerians at large. Um, you look at that this government in the last six years, the, the lowest person minister that has ever had, this government doesn't have any place for young people. You look at that, um, you see that this, the, there's no young person per se in the ministerial cabinet of the, of the president. The least, I think, is around 45 or, or 50. Even the minister of, of youth is, is not a young person per se. You know? So when you look at the fact that um, the PDP, like I said, is going to open the space for young people. Um, we're, going to be, we're going to get a lot of people that understand policy, that understand what governance is into place, not what we see today. You look at the quality of ministers that PDP had in 1999 till date, you can't compare them with what we have currently. Okay, now, um, you, you talked about opening the space for young people. Now, a lot of people argue that having young people in politics does not necessarily account for good um, governance. What makes you think, because um, the, the issue is in, co is in having competent people. Now, what makes you think that um, having young people and opening the space for young people would be a good strategy for your party? Uh, the truth is, we look at the party and over time, it has given, you know, space for young people, like I said, Credit people, young people have come into this party. They've done very well in, 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 the, um, in the party. And even when they've been given appoint, uh, appointments or they've been given you know, political positions in the party, they've done very well. 
So it's not going to change. Um, we've learned our lessons that okay. that that's what, that happened back then. We've learned our lessons, and moving forward, I'm very sure that we're going to do better off than what is you know what the PDP is and what the APC is doing very, um, mm. right now. Because you look at APC keeps making so much noise that oh, when they came into power, crude oil was selling at as low as um, thirty dollar or so per barrel. But they forget in 1999, crude oil was selling less than twenty dollar per barrel. The economy was in tatters. Um, we, the, the, the then president, then uh, President Olusegun Obasanjo, picked pieces that was left of, you know, left on by the military, and then he didn't go about crying and wailing everywhere. He went on to work, and you see that we paid, we cleared our debt. You see that we had a more robust economy. You see that the con the country was even much much secure than what it is. So for me, um, saying that uh, that. Um, the, the dollar today, it's, um, the crude oil is selling for 30 or so. Today, as of today, I think it's selling for 60. So you ask yourself, what has this government really done with the humongous resources that they've gotten in the last six years? We, we are now, our debt profile has risen, you know, we are like the poverty, poverty, uh, poverty capital of the world. You see that um, young, more young people are, diff you know, they are more, they are getting angrier every day because there's no job opportunities for young people and then you look at the fact that this government doesn't even have any respect for human rights and i think that's one thing you would always give to pdp because we will respect human rights we will respect um, the ability for freedom of information we, we signed freedom of information this is a government that doesn't even respect its party policies its party uh, um, constitution and then you ask and you think that they will respect the nigerian constitution they won't look at what happened with recently, um, with, I, I think basically that the, the IG has retired. He's no more in serving IG. What the president did was, I, I think, is constitutionally wrong. There's no way in the constitution that backs what that what the president did. So, like I said, this is a party that doesn't respect constitution. So, and then you expect that overnight they would, you know, perform magic. They won't. And I've said this several times. People keep saying, "Oh, PDP and APC are the same." I've, I've said no. We respect human rights, we respect the, the freedom of, of Nigerians, we respect the fact that you can insult us, you can do anything, and nobody is going to jail you. Nobody is going to come and arrest you because you insulted the president. Nobody is going to come and arrest you because somebody named his dog Mohamed Obuari. Nobody is going to do all, those, all, all, all that, you understand? So for me, I, I feel that the PDP um, is more welcome to young people. And that's the reason why you see a whole lot of young people in the PDP. Okay, now moving away from um, young, opening the space for young people in your party, um, there has been some rumors that the PDP is considering a name change, trying to possibly rebrand um, to see how it works out for them in 2023. As a member of the PDP, is that does that rumor have any atom of truth? I don't see. The truth is I'm not really interested in name change, to be honest with you. Um, APC... There were three or four legacy parties that came together to form the APC, right? So it was, in quote, they changed their name to APC. It didn't change anything. Nigerians are becoming more poorer. Um, Nigerians are being killed every day. The rate of insecurity today is becoming so high that you'll be scared to go out of your house. If you leave your house and you come back, you thank God that you came back alive. Just recently, I heard the journalist was kidnapped here in Abuja. So you look at if you see you even look at what happened with NSAS protesters where because people willingly express their fundamental human rights to protest and their their um, bank accounts has been has been frozen some of them were shot till today the government is still denying that they shot at peaceful protesters so when you look at it it doesn't change anything name change doesn't really change anything for me it is the people that you should be more worried about. It's not about the name. If you have people that have that have the interest of the country at heart, you should even be more comfortable with you know people that okay. At the end of the day, you know that you have people there that are interested in governance, not name change. It changed PDP. PDP is an institution. You can't be in power. You can't say you you you're a party for over twenty years and you just PDP is an institution. So you don't just wake up one night and say you just want to change. Um, the name. I will be more interested in setting policies that organize that concerns the party, which is not for public. You know, I could say those policies, which we've even made presentations to the leadership of the party, saying that we feel this and this and this. And 
you know, even graciously the party has even accepted it. The NEC has approved for e-registration of members, you know. So I think that's something that is commendable that um, young people now can register and become a member of the party um, without going to your ward or going traveling down to your village to go and register. You can register it, register at the comfort of your house. So for me, I think it is something that I would welcome more about reforms in the party and, you know, not name change per se. Okay, thank you, Mr. Almey. In case you're just joining us, this is Talking Politics on TOS TV, your digital first on African news network. And we're looking at the issue 2023, can PDP bounce back? And I'm speaking with Mr. Emmanuel Almey, um, a member of the People's Democratic Party and, of course, a businessman. Now, um, you can be a part of the conversation. Go to Twitter um, using the hashtag TOS Politics or the hashtag Talking Politics. Um, now, Mr. Almey, what are some of the things that the PDP would want to do differently because I know that Nigerians yearn for good governance. And you have also said yourself um, that right now, um, you, you've talked about alleviating Nigerians from poverty and suffering. So uh, ahead of 2023, what will your party do differently? Um, like I said, initially, we'll open space for more young people. Um, we'll take, we'll be more conscious of engaging Nigerians. Um, that's something that we'll be more conscious of making them understand that uh, PDP is, as it is today, you, you know, you have two major political parties, and let nobody kid itself. There's no thought force anywhere, as it is today. If we have two major political parties. So, um, I, but I feel, and I've said that PDP, and this is a statement of fact, that the PDP is more welcoming to young people than what you have in APC, you know. So, moving forward, I think we'll be more conscious about, you know, engaging with um, young people, and when you, when you look at the fact that uh, you asked what, what what are we going to do different, just look at this, the governors, look at our governors, then look at that of APC governors. Two two weeks or three weeks ago, the governor of River State, you know, was busy commissioning projects upon projects. Um, the governor of Oyo State has commissioned so many projects. Governor of Zamfara State has commissioned so many projects. Um, governor of Delta State has co co commissioned so many projects. So these are PDP states and. This is, this is something that you see within PDP states. Um, the PDP governor will invite the PDP governor to come and commission projects in the state. And then you ask yourself, Lagos state government has been there in the last two, three years, right? And I can't remember of any, you know, project that the government has really done fundamentally that people can really say, oh, you know, this has really brought huge relief to the people of Lagos state. You look at um, Yobe state, the governor, is busy in Abuja. The other day, shamelessly was saying that he attends, he goes to his state four times in a month. And he was admitting it that he goes to his state four times in a month. This is a state that has been leveraged, that has been leveraged by, by, by Boko Haram, high rate of under, under, under aged children out of school. And the, the poverty in that state is huge. And then you have a governor who, instead of him to be, you know, focused with governors in the state, is taking parties affairs above governors in the state. And then people keep saying, oh, um, the parties are the same. No, but I just, it, 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 it can't be the same. So when you look at PDP, you realize and you look at the governors of PDP that they are more focused and conscious about governance in their state compared to what we have in the APC. All right, that's Mr. May um, right there telling us um, what his party, the People's Democratic Party, intends to do differently um, ahead of 2023. And um, before we go, what are your last words for Nigerians out there um, watching this program? Uh, for me, I think I'll, I'll speak to young people, my constituents, because I'm a young person. I would say that I, I feel young people should participate more in governance, participate in participate more, you know, in the political space because. You don't leave governance alone for politicians. Young people should be more conscious about what is going on. Uh, we can't keep on complaining on social media, you know, keep um, um, crying and, you know, complaining every single time. We need to participate. We need to get involved in what is going on. And the only way we can get involved, is, the only way we can, can do this is to get involved. Hold our leaders accountable, whether it's PDP, APC, hold your leaders accountable. And I think 
that's, the, that's, that's your fundamental right. And nobody should take that away from you. The very least you can do is to hold your leaders accountable. Hold the president accountable. Hold your governors accountable. Hold your senators, house of rep accountable. And even local government chairman accountable. You know, for me, I think that's what we, should, we need to do. We need to be conscious of our political space. We need to understand that young people, nobody's going to give you the space until you get involved. And I think that's what, basically, I think that should be my last word on, on, on this. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Emmanuel Ume, for your time. We've been speaking to Mr. Emmanuel Ume. He is the P a member of the People's Democratic Party and a businessman, and he has been telling us um, how the PDP intends to bounce back in 2023. And this is where we're going to wrap up the cutting for Talking Politics. I'll come your way again tomorrow with another exciting um, package. But for now, my name is Azeh Sesele. Goodbye.